Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Clay, besides being such a versatile material, it's also a material that connects us to our past. It's a material that connects us to our ancestors. It's really one of the earliest materials that humans have been using. And the way that we are using it now in the art world, yeah, it's just another connection to, to who we used to be, to who we were, to how we started. So my work is rooted a lot in history, memory, and archaeology. Both my parents are archaeologists, and I never knew how much that process, that mode of thinking was rooted in me until I started making this work and started discovering a lot of uh, these little like clues of the archaeological process. And the process is very much rooted in that as well. Renata is particularly interesting because she is taking chances of using materials in ways that are different than what other artists are doing, particularly in the use of glaze. She is using glaze to create the object itself. She is casting that glaze um, as she would clay, sometimes with pieces of clay inside the glaze. Then she is polishing it, shining it to finish the surface. Hey, this is the moment of truth. Oops. <laughs> I made an oops. Here you can see how one of my molds broke. So all of the glaze came out. And sometimes, yeah, I just have to chisel the, way, the work out. But I think there's some good stuff happening in there. So we'll just have to wait and see. There. Okay, so now we can go and cut. Oh yeah, look at that texture. I love it. Oh, look at those bubbles. Yes. I'm excited to see like what happened in it. It's like excavating it and understanding like everything that transformed and moved, like the piece came alive in the kiln. And now as it cooled, it kind of freezes in that moment. And what you're getting is the frozen moment, like that, all of that energy. On this side, it seems like it has a mustache. Failure has always lessons. And failure has also taught me to go beyond the techniques or the solutions that I know. Starting experimenting and looking for solutions outside of the box, it's also a risk, but it has also paid off, I think. So the work of John and Isaiah Walton just pulsates with energy. Uh, really aggressive brush strokes, bold color. Uh, he's drawing his inspiration from personal experience, national dialogues, regional dialogues, but also pop culture, and gaming. My work is basically a representation of what my thoughts are of the South and my experiences in the South. I just try to get everything off the internet. Like, I'm just the internet-based artist at this point. <laughs> But it all starts for me like writing down what the title of a painting might be, and that's usually how I know what type of painting I want to do. John's process is deeply involved in research, and most of that research occurs on his phone. You know, he really spends a lot of time thinking about an issue before he addresses it uh, in his work. Usually I get an image off the internet, or I take a selfie, or I take a photo of somewhere, and then I go to PicMix which is basically you know, a layering type of um, app. And then I just draw from there. Like I just get my um, easel and just try to draw from my phone. Like this, this came from Google. Like I had to like get a simple version of this so I could be able to draw it. You know, I want everything to look cartoony. I turned this guy into somebody else too. He'll spend hours or days uh, Googling and, and watching YouTube videos and thinking about something. Then all of a sudden it's just an outpouring of creativity. 
He's a very fast painter. He's got a lot to say and he says it quickly. Southerners, we like to talk fast, so, you know, I like to paint fast a little bit too, so. <laughs> you know, I need that first shot to come out, you know, on the canvas. So I used to like working out of tubes. These uh, acrylic little thingies right here, you can probably buy for like $2. It's like good filler for making an underpainting for your work. Yeah, I like when a painting is going bad, so I can go into like this weird energy of panic of like, I must get this right. Sometimes having it too easy is kind of whack. And that's when I gotta like rethink what I'm doing. It's always about picking the right thing that, you know, I can speak on hopefully clearly enough to let it tell a story for other people in the future. Vaughn is very much a part of the local art scene here in St. Louis. He's been living and working here his whole life. He's really experimental with the way that he works. He's not afraid to try new things. He doesn't constrain himself to the square of the canvas. He really thinks outside of that. I take uh, unprimed, un unstretched canvas and I make abstractions and then I take uh, tools like scissors, um, knives and blades and I tear, cut and fray through them. For me, in a way, my artwork dwells in an aspect of performance, so I really enjoy putting myself into those works. So for me, I usually get in the studio here and I, I'll start with the piece, I'll get my canvas set, I'll uh, get my concoction of paints ready to go and I'll, uh, I'll prime the canvas by soaking the canvas in water first. But it is my goal to get a very even coat of water throughout this piece. My studio is usually a puddle after I'm done with my work. Because I don't use brushes in my practice, I found a likeness to these, to these car cleaning sponges here. But also, if I need a little bit of detail, I just cut the sponge down a little bit further. I really enjoy the canvases to work within the scale of a body. I really enjoy these canvases to, to mimic closely how we can see ourselves. Typically, I like to use a few different colors and let those colors mingle and muddle together upon the canvas. I choose to let this side dry out first, then I'll flip the canvas over and put an abstraction on the other side. Once both of those sides are dry and I'm completely settled on the amount of abstraction I've done, I either let the canvas sit, I'll roll it up and uh, maybe, let, maybe let it sit in my storage, or I go in and immediately start the fraying and cutting process. And this process is typically the most meticulous process, the most active, the loudest. You know, I think it challenges my viewer to really understand what happened or like how the artwork got to the state it is. I would hope that my work could represent St. Louis in a way that is both poetic, but it's also real. So you can really see where St. Louis has come from and where St. Louis is growing. You know, in that way, I see, I see that as my practice as well. I feel like the Delta is like a really fertile place for artists. And there's that space for, for growth um, in each and every one of us that live in the Delta. Mm -hmm.